Praise the Lord, everybody. Welcome to our sit-ups, our spiritual impact training using prayer and scripture. I'm Pastor Tony Burke Brown with your word for today. Listen, we know that we get up in the mornings, Monday through Friday, 6 a.m. Eastern Standard Time for prayer. The, uh, the information is underneath the YouTube video as well as the link. If you want to get an ebook for sit-ups to help you with your spiritual regimen, this is about spiritual growth, getting this word, applying it, getting it in our hearts, getting it in our mind, being renewed, being transformed form, growing, changing, and being impacted as we are progressing in this word. So it's about us growing, but then it's also so that we can help others, so that we will be better disciples and that we can make disciples. That's what we're called to do. That's what we're called to be. And so we want to get this word today. And again, get your pen, get your paper, get your Bible. You want to write down the verses of scripture because then you go back and you do your spiritual exercises so you can be spiritually fit. You don't just listen to somebody else tell you some things and read some scriptures, but you get that information and then you go back and you study and you nurse and rehearse it and meditate on it and get it all on the inside that the word dwells in you richly, that you are growing, changing, progressing and being impacted and impacted those around you. So what we want to talk about today is about uh, pressing forward. We want to talk about forgetting what's behind. We want to talk about what makes people stagnant and stuck, and we don't want to be that. So what we're looking at today is you envision yourself, right? You're on your way to a destination. You're driving or riding in a car. And let's say that you're going where you have to go. It's a far distance. But you begin on that path and you're headed in that way and you see that you've made progress. You see that you're not at your original starting point, but you are still a bit ways from your destination. So you continue to go and then you will eventually arrive at where it is that you need to get to. However, if you choose to either stop where you're at and you're tired of the journey, you're tired of the riding, you're tired of the driving, and you decide, you know what, I don't want to go all the way west or all the way east or all the way north or all the way south. I'm just going to settle right where I'm at, right in the middle. I was coming, you know, from the from from way up north and I was going way down south. But you know what, somewhere in the middle, I decided either, you know what, I'm going to just stay right here and this is good or or I really miss it up north. I, I really miss the, the cold weather. I really miss, you know, what it looked like that way. I, I really miss the people that I left behind. And so I'm no longer going to continue on this path, on this road and on this journey. Well, guess what? You will never see the south. You will never see where, where you were originally headed. You will never see the end of your destination. You become stuck right where you stop or you go back and you revert back and you end up back where you started. So your journey was wasted. You either end up at the beginning point or you end up stuck in the middle. Not a place that you want to be if where you're going is a place that you need to be, that you were called to be. So I say all of that to say, let's look at some verses of scripture. Let's first look in Luke chapter 9, verse 62. You want to make sure that you are writing these verses of scripture down, right? Because you want to go back. You want to study these verses of scripture. And you want to make sure that with all you're getting, you get understanding, okay? So what it says in Luke 6, I'm sorry, Luke 9, verse 62. But Jesus said to him, no one, after putting his hand to the plow and looking back, is fit for the kingdom of God. What this says in the Amplified is, but Jesus said to him, no one who puts his hand to the plow and looks back to the things left behind is fit for the kingdom of God. Now, this is saying, listen, our whole goal, right, is to experience the kingdom of God, to have eternal life, and the kingdom of heaven is within us. As long as God is the king of our life, right? We are experiencing or should be experiencing the kingdom of heaven. And so we are we are headed for a spiritual promised land, just as the children of Israel were headed for a, 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 a promised land in the natural. They were headed, you know, to the promised land, the place that God had already purposed and promised to them. And so, but somewhere 
along the path, right? They started getting weary and tired, complaining and murmuring about the journey. So by the time they have spies to go over and look at this land, it's everything that God said, including the fact that God had already let them know that there would be people they would have to drive out from there. But somewhere, the 10 spies forgot that there was uh, some, some, some enemies there that they were going to have to drive out. They began to focus on the opposition, on the enemy, on the giants. They began to focus on the thing that causes fear and frustration and distress and anxiety. And so they came back and said, we can't take the land. But the two, Joshua and Caleb, went in, focused on what God said. They saw a land flowing with milk and honey. They saw the great fruit. They saw the giants too, but they already knew that God gave them this promise. And so they had to go forward with it. And they're like, come on, let's go. We can do it. You know, if God's on our side, if we do what he says, God promised it. They were focused on God and the promise, God and the promise right? But the 10 spies were able to turn the minds of all the congregation of the children of Israel so that none of them made it because they stopped right there in their mindset. They were stuck right there. And the, what they said was actually, look at, I'm sorry, look at the book of Numbers. Chapter 11, Numbers 11. And first we want to look at this verse in verse five. It says, we remember the fish which we used to eat free in Egypt, the cucumbers and the melons and the leeks and the onions and the garlic. They began to remember what they used to have that their flesh like right? So they still have backwards mentality, even though sometimes you may not physically move backwards. If your mindset is backwards, if it's stuck, that you can't move forward, you can't see what's ahead. You're not focused on what God showed you, what he's leading you to, what he purposed for you. You will be stuck right there and unable to move forward. So by the time we get to Numbers 14, after the spies came back with this negative report, the 10 spies telling them about the giants and they can't take the land. By the time you get to Numbers 14 and 4, it says, so they say it one to another, let us appoint a leader and return to Egypt. Let's get a new leader, not the one God sent us. Not, not, let's not listen to, you know, Moses and Aaron. Let's not listen to the ones that are taking us to the place that God promised us. Let's listen to the one that's going to take us backwards. Let's follow the one, the other one that has a backward mindset. And because they said that they were stuck right there. God would not allow them to go to the promised land. He wouldn't allow them. He was going to wait until that first generation died off. Why? Because if your mind is stuck in the past, where you were, you want to go back to the old relationship. You want to go back to the old habits. You want to go back to the old lifestyle. You want to go back to the old places that God has delivered you from. You become stuck right there. No matter how much you physically move, you're taking that backward mindset with you. That is the misconception that many people have about if things aren't going right for them. They want to move here. They want to go here. Well, if I go here, if I move here, no, you're going with you. You have a backward mindset because if you have the mind of Christ, wherever you're at, God can, he can promote you. He can, he can uh, give you peace. He can give you joy. He can, he can make the plans that he has for you be fulfilled wherever he places you, wherever he sends you, wherever you find yourself, that peace and that spiritual mindset. You're able to see the things ahead and it causes you to press towards the mark, right? And so the, the children of Israel didn't have that. Even though they had seen the miracles of God, how God was working in their situations, parting the Red Sea, feeding them supernaturally, all the things that God had done, they were still focused on backwards. And so what Paul had said in Philippians 3.13 is about forgetting those things which are behind, I press on. And so this is about us pressing on. When you look in um, uh, Genesis 19, we're reminded of Lot and his wife and his children, right? That were delivered, that were um, delivered from the fire and brimstone of Sodom and Gomorrah. 
They were to go and not look back. They were to go to where they were safe, where they were delivered. And they were not to turn back. Genesis nineteen seventeen says, when they had brought them outside and said, escape for your life. Do not look behind you and do not stay anywhere in the valley. Escape to the mountains or you will be swept away. Verse 26 says, but his wife from behind him looked back and she became a pillar of salt. So now this is what happened. This is Lot's wife. Lot, his wife, his daughters already delivered. When you stop and you turn back, it takes us back to the first verse of scripture in Luke 9, 62. Jesus said, no one after putting his hand to the plow and looking back, looking back, stop looking back. What is it that you're looking back at? Where have you been stuck in your life? Because sometimes some areas seem like they're moving ahead, but it's one area that you can't seem to overcome. And one thing that we, you know, we, we, we kind of focus on physically and they say, well, I didn't go back to the old neighborhood. I didn't go back to the old person. I didn't go back to, but let me tell you some things that sometimes we don't consider. Who are you mad at? Has somebody hurt you? As long as you get stuck right there and you keep looking back saying, I remember when you did this. I remember when they did that. I remember when they hurt me, when they hit me, when they left me, when they neglected me, you're looking back. When you start to think about you know, guilt and shame, things that you, you maybe you made some mistakes, you ask God to forgive you, but you keep saying, if I hadn't have done this, if I hadn't have done that, if I, if I would have made this decision, you keep looking back. So it's different ways that you look back. It's not always about physically moving back to an old place, but it's a mindset. And even if you don't go back, you keep looking back. You have to forget those things which are behind. And so I know that we've gone over these scriptures, you know, uh, before, but I want you to look at it differently today. As you go through these scriptures, as you examine yourself, don't look at physically, don't look at only relationships or habits or lifestyles. Look at what's stuck in your mind. What are you thinking about this from the past that's making you not be able to move forward? And this is what I mean. If a person is holding on to unforgiveness from some things that happened to them, some abuse, some hurt, some pain, some brokenness, they, they nurse it and rehearse it, keep looking back, thinking back, looking back, thinking back. Your next relationship is going to be toxic. Your next association, your next connection is going to be toxic. If you think about how you failed before, how you, how you, um, made mistakes and how you did the wrong things and you keep thinking, I failed. You know, you begin to see yourself as a failure. Then and now you're afraid to move to the next thing. It it causes fear. So you're stuck. So now don't just look at physically going back, you know, or connecting with the same people. Think of a backwards mindset. And think about how the, the children of Israel were thinking about what they used to eat and they were thinking about you know, but when you do that, you forget the things that you ought to remember and you start remembering things you ought to forget. What do I mean? The children of Israel could remember the food that they used to eat because they didn't want to eat that manna. So they're like, remember, we had leeks, we had cucumbers, remember that? But they, what, you forgot that, you know, that Pharaoh had them throwing your first, your your, uh, your babies to and under in the Nile River, killing them. Did you forget that? Did you forget the bondage, the slavery that you cried out to God to deliver you? So when we want to get our minds right, we have to forget those things that are bondage, like unforgiveness and bitterness and guilt and shame and worry and fear and all of the things that lock the mind. Because remember, that is what needs to be renewed in order for us to be transformed. We can't move forward with the old mind. The mind has to be renewed. It has to become spiritual. It has to be the mind of Christ. It has to be thinking on things above. It has to be focused on God. Change your mind, change your life. So, we're going to wrap up in prayer. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the bell. Write down these verses of scripture and go and find verses of scripture to meditate, including these that tell you about people either moving forward or being stuck. 
And you can do that. All you have to do, if you got to Google it, but you can look it up, get you some Bible helps. If you're doing these sit-ups, these spiritual impact training using prayer and scripture, you got to get some Bible helps. Get you a concordance. Get you a Bible dictionary. Get you a couple of different versions of the Bible. Some study application Bibles. Get you like a New Living Translation study application Bible, right? Now, some people will tell you, oh, don't go on the NLT because it's missing some verses. It is. There's probably... 16 verses missing, something like that. But if you have a Bible and you're studying this, especially if it's a life application study Bible, but the study Bibles, if you look, people are lazy and they just listen to what they hear. If you look down in the notes, if you look down where the asterisk is, it always shows you what that verse is. It may not be up here, but it's on the same page. It's right there. So you have to study. You can't just go by what other people say. But the NLT is plain English. If you don't like that, Get you a new King James Version Life Application Study Bible. Why do I say Life Application Study Bible? Because it has good commentary notes, references. It, it, it helps you to be able to compare scriptures. It'll tell you you can connect it to these scriptures, connect it to those scriptures. So you can go back, get some background information. It gives you uh, study information on the different people in the Bible, background information, who they were married to, who their kids were, what their strengths were, what their weaknesses were. It gives you some more to study so with all you're getting, you get understanding. Amen. So get you some Bible study up so that when we do these, then you can go back and do yours. You got to dig for it. When you have to do the work, it remains in you. You are able to retain it. So we're going to close out in prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we bless your name and thank you, God. We thank you for your word. We thank you for changing, renewing our minds that we can move forward. Forgetting those things that are behind. It's the mind. Help us, Lord God, to think ahead, to reach ahead, to press up forward, Lord God. Father, to reach to those things that are before us. Help us, Lord God, to run this race with patience, not to quit, not to faint, Lord God, not to quit. Or give up in the midst of it, but to continue the journey to go where you send us, do what you tell us to do, accomplish that which you purpose for us. Walk in the plans and the order steps because we know the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. We thank you, Lord God, for continuing the good work you begin in us until Christ Jesus. We give you all praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Love you to life. I'll see you the next time on our sit-ups. Don't forget to join us in the mornings, Monday through Friday, 6 a.m. Eastern Standard Time for prayer. Facebook Live, Instagram Live, and the phone line. Information down below. God bless you.